Can't talk about C10s without mentioning its off-road adventure-inspired younger brother, the Blazer. Classic debate of lifted versus lowered can be found truly in the heart of the K5 Blazer world, or the C5 for two-wheel drive. However, they're pretty rare. And while Chevy has squandered the Blazer name in recent history, making it a shell of its former lineage, customizers have taken it beyond its original intention to become the ultimate hot rod truck. So for this episode of Influence and Impact, we are going with the natural progression from the last ones. You know, we we're talking about the C10s, their explosion over the last couple of years. Can't talk about C10s without talking about their little big brother, the K5 Blazer. Um, obviously, it's kind of based on the same chassis, based on the same platform. Uh, a lot of the same parts can interchange. So kind of one in the same, if you will, just a, you know different look and, and people do a lot of different things with them. Yeah. And, and this is actually one of the, the topics that I really enjoy because I've always been a big fan of blazers and also their other cousins there, the GMC Jimmy. And mostly these vehicles, uh, they actually came out of the action line series, which was our 67 to 72. Yes. Yeah. And they came a little bit later though, right? They yeah. did. Um, the Chevrolet actually started in 69 and GMC in 70. And the reason for that was, is that, uh, Ford and also international of all people, we're really giving them a hard time with their... Uh, yeah, with the Bronco, with the Scout. You know, I mean, they had to compete with with those. And everybody was going out off-roading, camping. You know, this was kind of... The, the, the years in the 60s and the 70s, people were being a little more outdoors. It, it was yeah. time for people to get outside. And mm -hmm. vehicles actually could get there now. You know, we weren't, we weren't talking about Model A's that were had water bags on the front of them to travel over the desert. I mean, this was like time to get outside with a vehicle and see the USA in your Chevrolet. You know, what's really interesting is the original Blazer concept was not even close to a C10. It was a little bit more of a competitor to the Scout, you know, much smaller. And that's actually what Harry Bradley wanted to, to have out there. And, you know, if it did, this might be a whole other story with the Blazers. So even to uh, the, the, the name Jimmy, let's talk about that for a second, because yeah. there was a reason behind the word Jimmy. And it's probably something people don't know. They figure maybe the guy that designed it or some guy, you know, or they it just kind of got nicknamed because of GMC. Right. But it's actually because of the word Jeep. Yep. And I know that that sounds crazy, but it's because the Jeep was still a stranglehold on the four-wheel drive market. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, obviously, since the introduction for World War II, everybody was, you know, into Jeeps and all that stuff. And so that's basically, yeah, if you were needed something tough and rugged, you were getting a Jeep. Right. Obviously the, the Bronco, the Scout came along and then the Blazers. And GM and really, Jimmy. well, you know, and GM really wasn't into four wheel drive. You know, prior to that, yeah. a lot of these vehicles were, or, or I should say all of the vehicles were done by an aftermarket company uh, or aftermarket companies that would outfit these Jeeps and they would change them into four wheel drive. So for GM, this was new territory. They were a car manufacturer that were getting into more trucks, which is, you know, for better lack they of were, terms. They were expanding their truck right. line, you know, because obviously with the C10s, it was kind of viewed as a little bit of an evolution from what would be more of the farm truck into something that's being used more daily, um, you know, take the family out, you know, especially, you, yeah, you could go off-roading in a K10, off it, yeah. But where are the kids going to sit? <laughs> That's right. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, and also, too, I mean, the, these guys went for, you know, look, let's let's have a removable top. Let's see the, yeah. the, the wilderness, you know, soak in the sunshine. So it, it wasn't a hard top. These were removable tops that had like a, a kind of like a camper shell rear hatch that you'd be able to lift that up. Mm -hmm. um, the walkthrough design was a major plus for this as well, because up until then, this was either something that you got in a suburban or what they used to call a carry all. Yeah. Uh, or but then you didn't have a removable top. You on didn't those, have a removable so top. You're not going to be able to have as many options. You know, people started putting camper shells on these or like the, you know, over the top cab ones. And it's right. obviously now you can go from the back door to all the way to the front seat, you know, have your whole family in there. Yeah, absolutely. Now this, the action line series, they were actually based off of K 10s. Yeah. So Which was their heavier duty, you know, often four wheel drive kind of right. platform. Now, but that didn't leave were, out. Yeah. These that, were available in two wheel drive and four wheel drive. They were, exactly. Right? Yeah. They weren't they weren't left out, you know, but but the actual frame itself started as a K ten. Uh, the wheelbase size, they they, they kind of mimic that same deal. And they did again, they they made some two wheel drives, but those were very rare. Yeah. Because back then, especially, yeah, if you're getting a blazer, you're going off roading. You're going camping, you know, and and you know, we were looking through some old, you know, 
Yeah. <laughs> we were looking through, you know, some of the older off-road and four-wheeler magazines. And yeah, you, I mean, granted, these are the off-road magazines and, and four-wheel drive magazines. Right. But I think that's kind of, even the advertising at the time, they were showing it going off-road on a fire, you know, road with a camper behind it and the whole family. So everyone was kind of gearing these towards off-road and, and, and camping as well. Right. I think with anybody, though, that... You- as an automotive enthusiast, if you can find a vehicle that's in low numbers, obviously that's going to be more desirable. So mm-hmm. the two wheel drive blazers from this era obviously are very sought after, well sought after because they were in very few numbers. Yeah. But again, too, GM at the time, it was their kind of their new pet. So they just, they wanted to go all out. They wanted to show what you could do with the blazer. So obviously the four wheel drive was kind of their marketing tool. Um, and, and it, it spawned things like, I mean, if we look at it now, this might be the, blueprints for overlanding i mean that's basically yeah what do you look at where you try to self-contain your camper or your rv into your truck or your suv kind of what overlanding is about you know and yeah i mean we're looking and right here we've got a blazer with you know an attachment that's got a roof rack it's oh, got wow. a pop out you yeah. know bed it's got a kitchen in the back i mean it looks like coffee cups you know it's got a side door like yeah, this is basically drive anywhere, off-road, you know, and just park and you're already ready for camping. You don't have to set a bunch of stuff up. You don't have to, you know, try to tow and park somewhere. Right. Just go have your fun. And that's basically, yeah, what overlanding is about. So. Well, even then, back back in those days, a lot of guys, hunters, fishermen, yeah. uh, backpackers, um, these were all ways that you could get to the outdoors and, be, and get lost. Well, and, and plus two, yeah, it's it's a little bit easier with a shorter wheelbase when you're you know off roading, um, and yeah, these definitely kind of kept going. And then, obviously, we moved into the square body look when that truck came around, right? Um, you know, basically, there's some differences though because the full tops only lasted a couple years on those. Yeah, well, here's on the rounded line series. So let's let's talk about the seventy three to eight to ninety ones really quick here. Yeah. Uh, that was a total redesign for that matter, because obviously the 73 trucks changed over to the square body yeah. look. So they, the blazers were popular enough that they went ahead and they continued to, to build that and make that into the part of their, uh, their, their new line. And the nice thing about it was now it wasn't based off of another truck. This was let's build a purpose, purposely built blazer that fits the truck look, but does something totally different. But that's yeah. And they, you know, obviously the sixties, 70s a lot of safety regulations were coming in you know crash testing like all that kind of stuff so yeah the the full removable top went away in 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 75 right you know it went to the basically a a half or just like basically a roof over your head protect you know against any rollovers or flipping but right i think that i think the regulation came back that the cab had to cover just behind the driver's head yeah so if you look at it's kind of like a half cab design Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. It's, I think it's a little shorter than, you know, like what a truck would be. Exactly. Um, you know, you don't have the next couple of inches behind, you know, for the back wall, basically. Right. Um, but yeah, kind of still looks the same. And then, you know, at least with this, if you do take the top off, you can still feel the breeze. You can see kids can look out the back or yeah. whatever. But your you know, sun's not beating down on your head necessarily the whole time too. Right. So. And, and that's one thing. I mean, I, I grew up with a, a buddy of mine, Mitch, that had a, a full convertible blazer. And believe me, we, we cruised the beach like crazy. And that was the best sun tanning machine around. Now, <laughs> um, of but course, sometimes you don't want it to be exactly so. if you don't want yeah. it to be, or if there's, you know, elements and you still want to have the back open. I mean, it's kind of nice to have something that, that covers at least your head. So, mm-hmm. and then, so on the, early blazers the 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 rear like the back window obviously was a tailgate design correct um but i think that kind of changed too with the square body where it was a little more modern yeah well again too because these guys now uh, you know, the designers said look we've got a fresh sheet of, sheet of paper here we're mm-hmm. not just putting like a camper shell on top of a, of a k10 truck now yeah. it was all of a sudden well what about the back window how are you going to you know use that so what they did is they integrated the back window to actually uh uh roll up and down in the tailgate. Mm-hmm. So, and there was two versions. I was I mean, going to say, like, I know from, not from the blazer, but from, from suburban growing up that, 
Now, yeah, you slam that a little too hard and the glass is going to break inside of that tailgate. Not only that, um, because it sounds from experience. (laughs) My dad. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I I can I can attest that, uh, you know, even Mitch's blazer, uh, he had a power window one. And um, obviously the power motor would always break. Oh, it always go out. It always go out or it would fall off the track or even then even some of the crank ones where they had the handle would actually kind of flip out like a belt buckle. And then you would actually hand crank mm. the the version if it didn't have the power option. Hmm. Well, even that would break. So neither one of them was like a good design. It was just, yeah. you know, where do we put the glass kind they of thing. Were, yeah, <laughs> they were starting to do power windows, stuff like that. And yeah, just kind of didn't quite work out. Obviously, it went to like the hatch design a little bit later. But um, I mean, these were definitely even right out of the gate. You know, guys were kind of customizing a little bit because especially to you start, talk about the 70s, the van craze is kind of. Kind of fits in a little bit with that, right. you know, maybe some utility there. Um, but definitely in the off-road race world is where, oh, you know, these saw the kind of the first well, real big, you know, full-blown, you know, kind of customization on it. Well, I mean, if you look at the famous old Olympia Broncos that Parnelli drove, uh, Parnelli Jones drove, yeah, you know, he built those with Bill Strope. And Bill Strope's a big Bronco guy, well known for that. But when Chevrolet, you know, approached Parnelli Jones, they mentioned they had this Blazer. And one of the really funny things is Parnelli, he kind of took to a fish to water on this deal. I mean, he went ahead and I'm going to say this is probably one of the first maybe purpose built off road race trucks that was a ground up build. I mean, if you really look at Parnelli's uh, Chevy Blazer, it, it doesn't have doors. It, yeah, it doesn't have doors. Like it's basically just one long sheet of, you know, fiberglass, fiberglass that mimics the square body, but obviously, you know, higher fender openings, you know. And just, yeah, just basically just slap it on the side. So, I mean, you're talking, yeah, a fully built trophy truck, basically. It, it pretty much but for the day. Slapped with some Chevy Blazer on the you know, right. almost, body lines on it. It's almost kind of like, it reminds me of like a short course truck. Yeah. Where it kind of looks. It, it mimics. The, mimics well, that's that. the thing. It's, yeah, you're, the, the manufacturer still has to advertise. They want people to, you know, the whole race on Sunday, drive on Monday. Right. You know, they want it to still look like a blazer, yeah. you know, yeah. so that way someone can, you know, still kind of go after it, maybe mimic it themselves a little bit. Right. But, um, yeah. I mean, you're talking full blown, you know, race truck. Oh, this, this. thing. Yeah. If, if you really kind of take a look at uh, this thing, I mean, it's it's a hand built frame, uh, hand built suspension, dual shocks, uh, dual coilovers. So these guys oh. were doing the most that they could for the technology at the time, but they took it just one step further over the, the regular stock blazers. Yeah. But as far as the stock blazers go, I, I think Vic Hickey's the other guy that we need to mention because I mean, he's kind of the grandfather of a lot of, uh, different models that he worked with Chevrolet with. Mm-hmm. I mean, no, obviously he's really known as the, to a lot of the off-road market is the grandfather or the, the founder of the Humvee. Yeah. But he really, uh, for, a good stint, maybe eight or nine years in a row, uh, he built prototypes for Chevrolet that were all Blazers. Now, given the fact that Vic Hickey also is first ballot international off-road Hall of Fame, you know, yeah. recipient. SEMA founder. SEMA like, founder, that know. kind of stuff. Um, you know, he, he was in the motorsports game and he sold vehicles to James Garner, Steve McQueen. Um, you know, his partner too was Brian Chichua, who was, you know, a huge influence as well in the off-road world. And those guys, they were building purpose, purpose built Baja 1000 or Baja 500 cars. So it just was kind of natural progression to say, Hey, this is my daily and look how I've outfitted it. Yeah. And that's, yeah. I mean, he built, you know, I think they were saying even obviously not a blazer, but maybe this is before the blazers kind of came about, you know, a, a off-road race truck for Chevrolet. The C10 was the first one that they had you know, that was done like that. And then went into the blazer thing. And, and he was also a little bit of a hot rod guy. So it was, yeah, you do an off road, but yeah, he had some street versions, you know, like that red one that was like yeah. chopped. Yeah. Um, you know, and yeah, it's not, it's not easy to chop a blazer or an SUV, you know, you're right. You're, you're de- not only dealing with the cab, but then, you know, you got, You've got the, the fiberglass part right? Yeah, to yeah. deal with. So, um, but yeah, I mean, he, he did a lot of different oh, yeah. stuff and then, yeah, I mean, for the military, you know, they were used to Jeeps. Exactly. Well, what kind of came after the Jeeps? The Humvee. Exactly. And that came from a guy that was into Blazers. So yep. there you go. There you Basically, go. Basically, the Blazer kind of replaced the Jeep. So it kind of the blazed military. the trail is what you're saying? All right. <laughs> <laughs> Cut that. Sorry, not a comedy show. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, I mean, and 
and obviously too, even, you know, GM, Chevy, they started doing their own kind of more custom additions to sell, you know, to retailers. Absolutely. Um, I mean, the, the, the chalet, you know, kind of came about in the, the later years of the square body or the mid mid seventies, late seventies. Well, that was a, that was a collaboration between a company, a camper shell company from Canada called Chinook. Mm-hmm. And they had built, uh, they, they built a lot of different um, conversions with different manufacturers. There's even a Toyota version that I, I know Mike kind of always laugh at. And they I've even, seen that. yeah. And they made and they, a Volkswagen version, a Volkswagen bug version. On a where bug? the bug? Yes, not a, where, the, not a, where the front like end a, is a bug and it's still a pan, but the rest of the camper is built around hmm. the car. It, it's I thought the they maybe would have done thing. that with like the, the bus or the. Like yeah. they had a truck, you know, kind of bus right. version. But right. No, no. They, no, they, they, they took a bug. a bug sedan, but they built a camper on the back of it. But Chinook was was known for these kind of wild ideas, and they actually ended up building a, a version of the Blazer. And don't forget about the GMC version, which is called the Casa Grande. Yeah, which, that's why I've heard of that one a little bit more than the the chalet. But yeah, I mean, basically, you're looking at full blown, you know, camper shell kind of design, or not? Excuse me, like full, you know, over the top, you know, yeah. camper and stuff. Which yeah, you'd see that. You know, you could put those on a, a regular truck, but it's a little different, you know, with the Blazer because, like I said, you got that full walk through. <laughs> You know, that was the game little changer. bit, you know, right. Better package and stuff for it. You know, yeah. integrate they, it. Well, they created a high roof. So that way, at least you could stand up and walk around in it when you're camping. I mean, obviously the, the, the top did actually traverse up. So it was kind of similar to like yeah. a Westphalia uh, Volkswagen camper van. Mm-hmm. Right. It kind yeah, of or the pop-up like campers that. and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. So they only made, um, I think they only made it for two years. I want to say 76, yeah. 77. Yep. Yeah. And they only made, you know, like. Not even 2,000 of these Right, things, right. But, yeah, it wasn't too um, many of them. Yeah. But, I mean, and that's the thing, too. It, they were pretty pricey. Yeah. You know, you're talking maybe four or five grand for a base, you know, kind of run-of-the-mill blazer, you know, or Jimmy, but you're looking at at, at least twice that for oh, yeah. the chalet. I think um, they, they had to be at least around 10 grand. Yeah. I mean, you look at it, it's like, yeah, you got an RV basically yeah. built in. So, yeah. Why not? Um, but, and, you know, they kind of kept going. So we've been talking a lot about the four-wheel drive versions, but let's not forget that the rounded series, they also made them from 73 to 82 and two-wheel drive. Yeah, but there wasn't a ton of them around. People, Like I said, people were looking for these for that camping adventure. Right. Yeah. The two-wheel drives were more of your uh, fleet services. Like if you had a... A lot of them were for the Ranger service, which kind of seems funny because why would you need a two-wheel yeah, drive would, for a four-wheel drive, yeah, right? you would want the four-wheel yeah, drive. Yeah, but, but uh, a lot of them, like, you know, I, I know I grew up next to Chevron in uh, Los Angeles, the refinery there, and a lot of them were in Chevron um, because they were enough to haul people around, but mm-hmm. you didn't. it was not a full-size truck. Yeah. Well, so. and that's the thing, too. Like, if, if you didn't need the, you know, long truck bed for hauling stuff, but you needed you know, a truck, Yeah. then yeah, per- Blazer's going to be perfect for that because you can throw a couple people in the back too. Right, so. right. So, and that, that served a good purpose. You know, they were few numbers, which once again, they're well sought after by guys that like to customize them. Mm-hmm. So the two-wheel drive definitely is, it's, it has cemented its place in its namesake. And it's, Yeah, and that's be called the C5, right? That's correct, yeah. yes. yes. Although what's funny is even if it's a two-wheel drive or obviously a lot of them are converted two-wheel drives now, people still kind of, just call it a K5. Right. It's just kind of become the the regular, you know, term for a blazer. Well, and the funny thing about it is the frame rails are still the same. Yeah. Okay. So it basically, if you're a four-wheel drive guy out there that wants to convert over to a two-wheel drive, it's pretty simple because yeah. you're just kind of getting rid of the front axle and the transfer case, and you can actually bolt on the C series front yeah. suspension. Yeah. You could bolt on from an actual two-wheel drive or what obviously a lot of people now, especially if you're, if you're taking it and convert it to two-wheel drive, you're lowering it or you're bagging it right so yeah you can take the same c10 front suspension from porter built chopping block gsi you name it right and you know just replace that all basically there obviously the rear is going to be a little different if you're doing some of that yeah um but we're getting ahead of ourselves a little bit because there's there's plenty of you know custom blazers that have been built over the years um but there was speaking of 82 you were saying that the two-wheel drives kind of went away well, something else kind of popped up. That's right. Um, you know, the, the the smaller, you know, SUV kind of started, um, you know, kind of obviously the Bronco 2 was there. It was a little bit smaller, kind of had the, the hard top. So the S10s well, basically yeah. got a Blazer and a Jimmy, you know, in their platform. Yeah, that, that was kind of the hangover from the fuel crisis in the late 70s yeah. where GM was just having a real hard time selling vehicles because the majority of their vehicles were all V8 powered. Mm-hmm. So enter the... the Mini truck. Mini era. truck. 
yeah, right? That's Which basically they, what yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah, and for the most part, they called those mini blazers. Ah. For the most part. Um, but the S series came on and in 82 and they started obviously with the truck and also a small version of what they call even the two door blazers. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, that was the mini blazer and and it was for the first time, for the most part, it was called the SUV, which that's kind of another milestone that you would like to talk about because today SUV just rolls off everyone's tongue. It's yeah. I mean, it's now it's, it's, it's a whole entire category of vehicle, you know, you got truck SUV crossover sedan you know, right. car like that's basically your you know your kind of market so yeah um but you know and that kind of obviously wasn't as popular in the custom world or off-roading um, but it served its purpose you know someone needed a little bit smaller suv and obviously yeah it's what's become very common now is your crossovers and your right. little mini you know suvs and um so they that kind of carried the name blazer even longer than the full-size trucks did it did First, yes yeah. I, and if you think about it, I mean, really looking at them from a four by four to, to a two wheel drive standpoint, the, the mini blazer four wheel drives didn't really have the same quality that it, you'd say. No. You know? And then especially too, like, you know, yeah, obviously the, if you're looking for something smaller that was going off roading, you were probably getting a forerunner, you know, or obviously a Jeep. Right. So, right. Um, the, these were more of less like the yacht club. You know, a, a, a GMC, a fully loaded GMC, Jimmy, High Sierra, which was actually called an S15 because yeah. we don't want to, you know, forget about S10, our... S10. Right. Yeah, S15, yeah. So those were, you know, your, your uh, kind of fully loaded, nice, small station wagon that mm-hmm. guys would, you know, pick up to maybe drop their little rowboat or fishing boat in the water. So they would get four-wheel drive for the, the launch ramp. Mm-hmm. But uh, they made two-wheel drive versions as well. Yeah. I think those are a little more popular. And they I'm are. Guessing. Yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, you, you can't forget. I mean, the late 80s, IROC wheels, lowered blazer. I mean, come on. Yeah. Like this well, is... and there's there's a guy that, that we know that's, you know, very iconic name in the magazine world for the last, you know, 30 years. And he, I mean, we're going to be bringing him up a little bit a lot because he had several blazers. But... He started out with an S15. Oh, yeah. Jimmy Blazer, and that is Brian McCormick. Absolutely. I remember it. Yep. Yeah. It went through a few different kind right. of versions. Um, yeah, obviously, just kind of started out your regular old, you know, lowered little mini truck, a couple, you know, color match things. And and then it it epitomized, you know, 80s graphics. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, that's the some thing. good, some bad. Yeah. <laughs> no, Brian, Brian was at the right place at the right time for these vehicles. I mean, obviously he was in his, in his younger twenties there, early twenties. And that was the affordability. I mean, a mini blazer yeah. was 8,500 bucks, right? Full size blazer was about 12 grand back then. So, you know, that was a big deal when you're, you know, working at a gas station, making three fifty an hour. You know, let, let's really think about the yeah. time period here. So that's where, when you kind of look at Brian going through that transformation of a couple different versions of it, the grid Movable graphics. top, the, yeah, the grid graphics, the pink and the teal, you know, kind of baby blues, um, you oh, know, the, old, the, yeah, the, the Targa removable top, targa you, removable mentioned, top. you mentioned that Let, let's, let's roll back yeah. to that one real quick because the Targa removable top, I mean, it was I mean, that's silly. the thing. These, these blazers didn't have a removable top. No, no. So he had to make one, <laughs> but it was silly that at the time to think I'm going to cut the center of the roof out of this thing yeah. and make it removable. But that was the 80s. Not a sunroof. Right, right. We're <laughs> talking moon roof. Tar- we're talking Target. We're talking. You know, yeah, if a Porsche has it, off. why can't I? Yeah. Right? No, and that's what it was. Like, hey, let's take all this stuff that are on other vehicles, yeah. figure out a way to make it work on this, you know? The grid graphics just, just it totally throws me back. Yeah. Total no, I mean, throwback. it completely screams that. Right. Um, but then, yeah, he went into the full size a little bit later, a little more pro street style. Yeah. Or action series. I action mean, series, Blazer. Yeah, yeah. Early, you know, yeah. early 70s. Um, and then... That one went through some different versions as well because it went full pro, pro street. I mean, yeah. we're talking full roll cage, right? You know, wing on the back, big old motor in it, um, big old motor with nitrous. I mean, yeah, that was that I mean, was the deal. Yeah, big old scoop on the hood. Right. Yeah. Uh, so that was you know full blown you know and, and pro street style back then. So Brian used to compete with this vehicle too at the RG Canning Show. So the first time I came across this Blazer, it was the other version when it was white teal and in, in I believe like a kind of a darker blue and it didn't really pop that much especially at the shows it looked it was kind of plain uh, because RG canning shows remember were inside a, an arena and a lot of times you either had a lot of bright bright light yeah. or they would bring the lights down low so this thing didn't pop it just yeah I mean it's it's yeah it's two-tone it's nice it's, you know 
slam down big old you know meats in the back, but right. It's not going to necessarily, you know, turn any heads. Exactly. Yeah. And, and in Brian too, Brian had a great style, you know, Brian always wanted to be kind of like that in your face, like, you know, look at this. So for him to redo it to the version that it ended up when he, mm-hmm. before he sold it, um, it made total sense. You know, the big bright paint job, the yeah. huge meat tires, uh, you know, the, the, the giant big block with the nitrous motor in it, um, a convertible with a roll cage. I mean, what are yeah. you building a jungle gym? <laughs> right. Well, no, but that's like I said, the, you know, for, if you're going to be taking down the drag strip, or at least you're mimicking that style, right? You kind of have to have that because they don't have a yeah. roof, you know, on these. You know, basically they, obviously not until '75. Well, so. and, and and I don't want to quote this now because it's been a lot of years, but I do remember that I think there was kind of a problem where I think Brian tried to make a rag top out of the shell, mm. and that didn't really work out too much. So I think that was one of the reasons why he ditched it. And again, too, yeah, we'll have maybe. to ask Brian that one day. I mean, but, he, he still had it, you know, it could still go back on there. Right. You know, but yeah, maybe, maybe he had to re rethink his plans on yeah, everything. Yeah. You know? So, but it, it definitely was a game changer. I mean, I, mm-hmm. I remember it was on the cover of the magazine when, when you could put girls on the cover of the magazine. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, that was kind of cool, but um, yeah, it was definitely a, 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 a standout at the time and, and he did a really good job with it. Exactly. Yeah. Right. That's. Hey, look, the, the sport 20, truck craze yeah. was just insane. Yeah. So. Right. Yeah. But, but Blazers. That. Especially two door, or I'm sorry, two wheel drive blazers, the action lines, those were super popular still. And mm-hmm. they remained kind of the, the, the popular thread through the 90s there. That if you had a two door blazer that was, you know, 67 to 72, uh, you built a roadster. Yeah. Well, and that's, yeah, it kind of fits that cruiser, you know, cruise night kind of style of just, yeah, just cruising down the street with a, you know, top down. And, exactly. Yeah. And, and, you know, and, and that was, again, you know, a few, they were few and far between, so they were rare. And hot rodders kind of got a hold of them, which, you know, that, that wasn't an unusual thing. I mean, you look back at even, I mean, Andy Brizio, he, he drove a black and flamed K5 Blazer daily, you mm-hmm. know, and I think it had a turbocharger on it, too. I mean, th- this was cool stuff back then. Yeah. You know, and no, that was and that's... in the 70s. So by the 90s, these guys had already kind of like had been playing around with these things for a while and had a little recipe kind of going on. Mm-hmm. Um, so that got very popular even in the late 90s where guys were really putting some serious money into them. I know even like, um, you know, the first one that comes to my mind is Brett Vocal. Uh, yeah. Ride yeah. Tech Ride or tech. Air Ride Technologies yeah, back then. Yeah, he founded Air Ride Technologies, later became Ride Tech. Exactly. Yeah. Um, you know, and also for, but for a little bit, a lot of them looked the same. It was like the screaming red paint job. Well, and that's, there's the famous, you know, two trucks from Porterville, California. You know, we touched on the C10, one of it. There was its counterpart, you know, of, of a red blazer. And that's, I remember going through some of these things when we were, you know, at Street Trucks Magazine, and yeah, there was a handful of red bagged K5 Roadster style blazers yeah. that kind of all looked the same. Right, they did. You know, even maybe some same wheels or similar stuff. And, yeah. and what's funny is, yeah, the a red Roadster blazer has kind of carried... It has. Throughout. Like it's still popular. Like that's still a, a, a winning kind of combination and recipe. Yeah. Um, you know, from there, there was, you know, one that stood out in my mind that was very early on and very cutting edge for, for its time um, in 2009. And that was kind of right at the very start of the C10s kind of starting to get popular, yeah. but a little bit ahead of it. Um, that was Steve Ortega. Oh, yeah. Uh, from Severed Ties. Um, you know, I remember being at uh, West Coast Nationals. And uh, I think it was, you know, end of September or something mm-hmm. like that. And he had just, uh, uh, they had bagged it. They had done a bunch of metal work on it, roadstered it. Uh, him and Bob Grant from Grant Customs. There you go. Obviously, the, you know, metal magician. Um, but it was just primered and no interior, no nothing. You know, and, and I remember him saying, um, I think I can take this to SEMA. It's like, well, do you think you can have it painted and done? And, yeah a month and two weeks. <laughs> right. Right. And you know, if you will, yeah, sure. We can get you a spot. Um, so yeah, him and Bob kind of made a deal, you know, and that thing really turned heads and that yeah. was, you know, bright, probably Tangelo orange. Right. Um, you know, fully laid out on the ground, big old, you know, race line billet wheels. Um, they rode, you know, obviously road stirred, but they even, you know, I think that was a lot of times you'd see on the roadster blazers, you would either see, yeah, they would cut, you know, they would just leave the top kind of edge of the windshield on. Right. Or a lot of guys would, you know, cut the post down and, you know, make it like a razor top, you know, custom windshield or something like that. Well, well, that's such a hard, 
you know, the fun. <sighs> they look kind of funny mm-hmm. if you keep it all just stock and right. you're not putting the top back on it all right. as well because they they're a little tall on the windshield. Yeah. Well, the other thing too is the Action Line series. The top of the door is taller than the bedside. Yeah. So, so you either got to cut funky, those down. Right. You have yeah. to. You have to. You have to cut one, one down. Other. Yeah. Right. It's one, one or the other. Mm-hmm. So that that's why the, the proportions are kind of strange because again too I mean it was made to have the top put back on it. So yeah. if you're going to make it a full roadster, you know you had to kind of cap the top. And create some type of different body line, which then if you're going to do that, well, yeah, you're going to move the windshield post. You're either going to, you yeah, know. You're going full yeah. custom. Right, right. So, so. Um, but that, yeah, and that, you know, was a very iconic truck, um, or excuse me, Blazer. And it went through a couple different hands. Like, it's still around today. And it, you know, he sold it, you know, shortly after SEMA. Um, and the guy that bought it, uh, you know, Kevin put, you know, the big block motor in there. Yeah. Um, and then it got, you know, all redone redone the interior you know painted red i mean and that's the thing it was a beautiful blazer but yeah it was literally painted and all of the interior done in a little over a month right you know yeah. so that one stuck around and you know it's it's but it's been a nice you know blazer for it, exactly at least 15 it, years it's got so. a, it's got good bones yeah. so it, it makes sense um, you know if we're going to mention that though uh, i mean we should start to mention that blazers also there's other ways that guys have customized those too i mean the first one that comes to my mind is jason hill yeah and his square, square body i mean he's kind of the square body king right um but, but he yeah, his the way that he went the opposite way yeah, where he, he actually didn't roadster it. yeah he didn't roadster it mm-hmm. he actually cut the back off of a suburban so you have kind of that high like kind of peak roof mm-hmm and he welded that back onto a blazer to make it an actual full-time hardtop. Yeah. And I think a lot of people, when they see this, and, and this this blazer, too, was built kind of two different versions. I know that yeah, one was like, the first of, time was like blue. Yeah, and, it was blue, white with some graphics. Kind of kind of maybe a little old school, right. you know, 90s-style graphics still. But then he um, tried to upgrade it with, like, or update it with he, some, like, uh, earth tone graphics yeah, or something like that. he completely redid it, you know, yeah. for that, that time period, you know, probably 15 years ago where it went earth tones, Browns, greens, yeah. all leather, you know, brown interior, t- tan interior. Just, right. Um, but yeah, it's, it kind of like, kind of surprised me that maybe Chevy didn't make a version like that. I know. You know I know. Because it's basically what they went to in the 90s, you know, with the yeah. new body style on the Blazers is no removable top anymore. So I think a lot of that, though, had to do with, you know, when the squares were built Again, they were trying to just get the market out there to say, do something with this, mm-hmm. you know, have adventures, go places. This, you know, is your, your, your kind of Swiss army knife, if you want. Yeah. Uh, whereas in the nineties, we're talking more safety regulations. We're talking, you know, seatbelt laws kind of came into to play in, in the late eighties, early nineties. So safety was a major version. So I think that's the reason why in the later years, obviously the, the, the GMT 400 versions, um, you know, they went to a, a non-removable top. Yeah. So no, and that makes sense. You got to kind of stick with the time. Um, but that's, you know, 2009, we're talking about the, the C10 craze kind of starting to pop up. Um, you know, we already mentioned and talked about Delmo, um, you know, Nacho was one of those kind of very, you know, milestone kind of trucks where the patina on it was just perfectly, you know, kind of gold. Right. And for the second round, you know, Mason, uh, went back to Delmo again, but he did it with a blazer. I know this time. So Larry was, you know, kind of one of those, kind of one of the only, I think, kind of patinaed blazers that I remembered seeing being, I, you know, done at that time. With, I had forgot that he called it Del- Larry. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's he always had to have a name for something. Yeah, you know? but Larry fit that truck real well. That that just was like you kind of looked at it and you, yeah, it's my buddy Larry. <laughs> So that, that worked out well. But what I yeah. really liked about Larry was um, the integration of, and again, to Delmo style, where he had built the oversized wheels to mimic the C10 hubcaps. Mm-hmm. And uh, that, to me, was really kind of cool. Um, yeah, and I think that was, I believe that was the first one that he did them on. Yeah. Obviously, that got wheel got sold and, you know, and then put on a couple other trucks and stuff like that. But I think that was kind of the, the prototype for yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, more of these guys, too. I mean, if, if we start talking about people that have done things to them um you know also you look at the guys that have used them for racing because if you look at the wheelbase you mm-hmm. know the wheelbase is in a real good spot I mean, yeah it's, much it's shorter shorter than, than your c10 mm-hmm. kind of closer to a camaro so if you're trying to get a truck to turn you know a blazer makes a lot of sense yeah so you got you know there, there's the other jason hill 
um, which True. which I don't want to take away for anything from him. Um, but <laughs> yeah, uh, California Hills. the California Hills, not the Texas Hills. Yeah, and uh, you know he first off he built an amazing uh, I believe it was like that Marina Blue and White. Mm-hmm. Amazing uh, quality craftsmanship. I remember yeah, seeing it, seeing it the first time. Blazer, yeah, yeah, and, and it was just a beautiful truck. No, and what was really cool is they, you know, uh, we ran on the front of the magazine cover um, back then, and they had shot it, you know, because obviously, like you said, full pro touring, you know, performance style chassis. Uh, so they they shot the chassis, and then you know shot the truck when it was finished. So right. kind of able to kind of faded in to show the work that was being done, you know, underneath. And, and yeah, he autocrossed that thing. Well, as as much of a nice, you know, show truck as it was. Yeah. I was at the, uh, I was at the 2011, I believe, uh, uh, fastest streetcar shootout for Optima. And this, this showed up and I was very surprised that he, he said, yeah, I'm going to take it out on the track. Mm -hmm. Um, at the time I was getting into a lot of autocrossing too, building my Foxy Cleopatra truck. Yeah. And actually, when that was built, uh, he came out with another uh, Tahoe. And what's interesting about this one is he basically gutted a Corvette. He had a C5 Corvette in his shop, and he gutted the whole thing. So underneath this thing, that, again, was patina and kind of looked a little raggedy. Yeah. Um, but but think, underneath it was this C5 Corvette. Yeah. So it was I just think he total... was just basically, hey, I just want, this thing's oh. just going to drive and haul ass yeah. and, and handle. And, yeah. You know, I'm not worried about the outside. You know, he's probably no. probably like... Got some nicks and some scratches, maybe a little, you know, stuff here and there on yeah. the, the blue and white one. So, yeah, I mean, I was yeah. on the road course with him at California Speedway and I mean, he came by me like nothing. Um, I was following him for a while, you know, and, <laughs> and that was just a stock C5 package. I'm the one with a stroker 408, you know, thinking that I have all the horsepower in the world yeah. and he drove right around me. And I, but I, what I liked was I think that inspired more people to get into that because you look at like, let's say the Provost. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, a little you, more recent. Yeah. One. Yeah. You know, and those guys, they, they actually kind of, let's say trailblaze the way of, of changing even the sheet metal over to carbon fiber. You know, we're talking mm-hmm. now like Jeff Moosey type things where you've got Moosey speed. Um, well, and, and that happened cause they kind of put well, it into a wall. Well, she, the, I mean, tell we know, me about we, it. We know we, yeah. I was going to say, you know, the, the story of put something in a wall and then replace it with the carbon fiber. That's right. So that's right. Easiest way to do it. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I think that happened at the SEMA show inside the donut pit, uh, that was run by the Hoonigans. Yeah. And uh, tight quarters, lots of smoke. I mean, that's <laughs> you, you're going into one of those donut pits, you know, or takeovers, even like the one that, you know, Sack Speed was running at Holly LS Fest. You're, you, you just need to expect that you're going to crash it or ding it or dent it up and just not, don't be mad about it. It's a baby dent. Because that's baby dent. Baby yep. dent. It's all that matters. <laughs> right. Know? I mean, that's just, that comes with the territory when, right. when you're doing that. It's kind of like racing, you know, it's, you just got to accept it. And, and roll with it but um yeah talking with about you know provost and stuff um they kind of re redid uh another iconic blazer recently uh prom, oh. prom queen that's right john oros and yeah we can't be talking about k5 blazers with, without talking about john oro that's true um and it was kind of funny as you know obviously we c10 club everyone knows him from that but he's always had his blazer always, always. you know so yeah. luckily thankfully he invited everybody and as the c10 club he didn't just go oh this is k5 club you only you got to have a blazer to right. join in but um yeah and that started out as you know kind of like you said that that top off you know cruiser you know just kind of bagged a little nothing crazy yeah you know have a good time with it and it it's that was prom queen you know one right and it's progressed from there you know pretty heavily well if you guys don't know who john oro is uh first off go to a show yeah um number two john's one of those guys that is just the most humblest person you can think of in this sport if you want to call it a sport um you know he had this blazer i don't know how many decades i mean he's probably had it for a while yeah um as long as i've known john i I, i've he's been in it and it's gone through a couple different configurations here Mm -hmm. and there but they stepped up the game when when it went up to Provost. Yeah. I mean, it was a full body off restoration, um, you know. Full custom interior. Yeah. You know, permanent Roadster now. Right. You know, crazy audio system in there. Um, and I know Sean over at Empire, you know, kind of re- did the, you know, fender wells, the engine bay, all, right. you know, his style. And then, um, you know, they just put AccuAir on it a little bit ago. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. And the, but the LS swapped it, you know, Johnny G did that. Yeah. Um, and that was, you know, at least eight, nine years ago. Yeah. Uh, and that was, you know, kind of its upgrade for a while. And then, you know, it just kind of went 
full blown, you know, show truck, but he still cruises and drives everywhere. that thing everywhere. I, I mean, you'd be surprised. I would be very surprised to see how many miles he has on that thing, even after they've done it. I mm-hmm. mean, he has driven that truck all over the place. So for anybody yeah. that says, oh, it's a show truck, he doesn't take it anywhere. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> that thing's probably got more miles than most Priuses have. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I mean, and that's the thing. There's There's been a big growth of the Blazers that have kind of come along with the C10 growth. Um, you know, one of our good buddies, Pony, his his Blazer came out, you know, 2013, 2014. You're talking about the Mary Jane Blazer. Mary Jane. That's correct. Yeah. Um, and what's funny is, like, he's he's mixed it up a little bit since since then. But, you know, for C10s and Cadillacs, it was, is this one going to be red? Or is this going to be black <laughs> with red interior? Right, right. So, yeah, Mary Jane's, a, you know, black Blazer, all red interior. Um, and what's crazy is... You know, he, he did the usual, you know, Central California mini truck tricks to it. Yeah. You know, chop and block, you know, suspension, shaved kind of everything, you know, custom dash, um, LS powered, you know, yeah. but nothing super crazy, Well, you know, but looked really good. You know, but the thing to really kind of look at is, is that that blazer is a little bit of a kind of a earmark in this whole uh, time timeline, timeline here, mm-hmm. because if you look... Chopping blocks, that's their first chassis that they actually did for the C10. True. Yeah. I mean, the full, kind of prototyped full, it. First, I should yeah. say first full chassis. Mm-hmm. Um, I know that PPC Customs up there in Clovis, California, Richard and his guys, they put an LS in it. Because mm-hmm. um, that was like, well, if we're doing a full frame, then why are we going to put a small block back in it? Let's go ahead yeah. and upgrade it. Um, that also debuted at the SEMA show, and it, it, it turned a lot of heads. Mm-hmm. You know, and it, it did. It had a few things that kind of also fell back on some of the designs back to even like Brett Vocals, where it had like a 59 Impala dash. Yeah. It had the Razor uh, windshield. I mean, obviously a Roadster, mm-hmm. but, um, you know, big uh, race line wheels. And I mean, you just, it's one of those vehicles that you see that thing driving down the road, you're going to stare at it. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing too. It, it had a lot of custom work you know, on it. Cause like the whole front end was molded together. Exactly. You know, it was the, obviously the K5 blazers came out in 70. So had all of them had the egg crate, you know, big old bull nose front end, but you know, he put earlier, you know, Chevy truck on it. Yeah. A little sleeker design. Um, but I think for, for pony, what really kind of did it for him is, you know, he took that to Barrett Jackson. Right. And let's just say his son is named Barrett. Yeah. So, yeah, he sold that for I think 160,000 and this was when you weren't getting that unless you had a 69 Camaro. Yeah, I you know that I think was a big game changer too yeah. and uh, I I think that, you know, for one, good for Pony, mm-hmm. but it really let people know, hey, these are on the map. Yeah. You know, like guys get start paying these attention. These are these are desirable. They're going for quality money and, you know, and they can be full custom and still get, you know, all the money. Exactly. Um, Being a glass guy too, I think helped out a little bit too on that windshield because yeah, he knew how to do it. Yeah. Do it right. Yeah. yeah. So um, that helped him out. But yeah, I mean, there's, there's been a handful that have kind of even come, you know, after that in the same kind of full custom style, you know, talking about wolves, you know, Oh God, that's yes. just super clean, had the top on it, you know, didn't color match the top. Like some, maybe some guys did, but right. kept it white. Um, and then, you know, there's, there's one that, you know, really stands out and he calls it a Tahoe. Um, <laughs> but that's, yeah, Cisco did kind of the same thing that Jason Hill yeah. did on, on the square body blazer is there's been guys over the years that I've know that have taken a suburban and shortened it. Right. What I like about Cisco's Tahoe is, is that it looks like something that GM should have built. Yeah. Cause even you look it, at the doors. It, exactly. It, 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 it reminds me of a nomad. I mean, that's yeah. clearly that that back window design, that kind of slope a B pillar is is definitely robbed right from a, a nomad. Mm-hmm. But even too, you start looking at the way that he proportions the back of it too. It doesn't just drop off like a blazer. It kind of it is slanted back. That's so everything kind of still has that in motion design. Yeah, um, it works together. It, it does. Uh, and then even too, the way the interior even is laid out, the interior looks like again. It could have been built by GM or it should have been built by GM. So, I mean, hats off to him on that one. Um, You're talking about interiors. I mean, <laughs> the, and this is, you know, from last year at SEMA and the twisted Jimmy. square body K5 Jimmy. Mm-hmm. From the outside, beautiful truck, right. beautiful blazer, Jimmy, et cetera. 
Um, but yeah, you go on the inside of that thing and it, you just blown away. Well, you, absolutely blown away. This is showing what is now available to us. Yeah. Whereas, you know, if you look at this blazer, um, first off Rivian. Yeah, definitely Rivian inspired, <laughs> you know, modern luxury, all the wood grain in the dash, right? the door panels, um, you know, the big, big screen, you know, yeah. obviously it's got, um, leather and, you know, custom leather interior, but I mean, you look at those door panels and except for maybe where it attaches to like the pillar, you can't tell that that's a square body, no. you know, kind of well, design. I mean, it's full custom, you know, I know they did a lot of 3D printing. And and, and that's what I wanted to bring up yeah. is, is the 3D printing aspect because I have a, a an upholstery background and there's a lot of vehicles that I even built in, in, the, in the 90s that had our interiors in them. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, I look at this and this is next level. This is something like... Yeah. We would dream about that. Well, and this is all designed on a computer. It's all designed on a computer. Yeah. And, and that's what I mean about now we have that toolbox mm-hmm. where it's before it was like, oh, the sky's the limit. Well, until you get into tools. Now yeah. the sky is the limit because it's we can. It's now your, your limit to your imagination. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And, and we're seeing that and not just, you know, this vehicle, but, you know, let's go back to Jason Hill. I'm, uh, he's usually has a lot of great looking interiors yeah, because he's got, he's got Jimmy yeah, next door at really JD. Good. Yeah. JD uh, uh, Interior Works. And those guys have done some great interiors. And I know that he's starting to use 3D printing. But, you know, if we're going to talk about that, we should probably bring up Charlie Brown. Yeah. The Holly Boys. You know, that was another, you know, iconic, you know. Uh, full custom blazer coming out and, you know, they kept the removable top, but, you know, wrapped it in a different material that matched kind of, you know, the look of it. And yeah, I mean, that thing's just, it's very tasteful. Yes. Tastefully that, done. All, all the earth tones kind of match up right. some custom touches on the front end I mean, street rod interior, you know, and that's what I like about that truck is that it looks like something that a mini truck guy would drive. It looks like something that an older gentleman would drive. It looks like something you could take, you know, to take it out to dinner type thing, take your date out. Um, but also too, it's something that's going to be a showstopper. So, yeah. uh, I mean, that's the thing. There's been, there's been so many that have been influential, but you know, also kind of had their own style to it, you know, that's coming out in the last 10 years. And, you know, like Mike Losh, we talked about him in C10 deal with slosh tubs, yeah. but his follow-up was a blazer. Well, he, he had know, a square peg. He had a, his wife's. This I was going to say he, he yes. had, a, you know, after cloud nine, I'm sure that mama Lash said, you yes. know what, what, it's my turn. <laughs> so yeah, where, what am I getting? Yeah. Here? So yeah. Uh, he did build his wife a, a very nice uh, a two-door blazer. Uh, they called it square peg. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's held up very well over the years too. Yeah. I think, so. yeah, someone else owns it now yeah. out here, but All right. Uh, yeah. And that too, just super well put together. Not a lot of nice little touches. Obviously the outside was kind of, Meant to keep very factory looking, yeah. which was, you know, which is the style. Right. Um, but then, yeah, he had like a, he even had a, like a bedwood floor. Yeah, in he the did. back that was all molded in with everything. Right. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's funny. You can just keep going down the list because, yeah. you know, you got Corey Scott with the Hot Wheels, you know, oh, K5. That was totally even earlier. That. Yes. Yeah, that was earlier than right. that. Well, okay, check this out. How about rock stars too? Because I know a couple rock stars. I mean, I've worked on a few rock stars. Well, it's yeah. I mean, I know there's there's been a handful of, you know, obviously the Van Halen stuff that that we'll get into, but yeah, I mean, when when something's cool, the rock stars are going to gravitate towards right. it. You right. Know? I mean, I can myself personally two things come up to mind. I mean, I remember back when I was, boy, in my early 20s working at a stereo shop, you know, we threw a sound system in Axl Rose's uh, you know, Blazer. And it was just a nondescript 89 blazer, red and white, uh, lifted on some 35s. Didn't look like it was much of anything, really. Yeah, just your you know, but just a one. good cruiser that he could cruise through LA, and a lot of people wouldn't really look at him. Mm-hmm. You know, same goes with, uh, you know, our friend Jeremy Cook, who uh, actually grew up with the guys in Sublime. Yeah. You know, he, yeah, uh, it's Miguel. You know, you know, Miguel's blazer that yeah. he went through. Cause I, I remember I went over there and helped him, uh, put the front end together on that thing. Mm-hmm. So, and I know that he, Miguel drives that thing everywhere around Long Beach. You know, yeah. I see them all over the place. No, and and even to this day, you know, you're talking about some more recent ones. You got, you know, Travis Barker. He's, oh, yeah. he's you know, he's got Cadillacs, he's got trucks. Um, and then, yeah, he's got a lifted. And that's the thing, too, I've noticed. In the last, you know, t- let's say 10 years, people, yeah, obviously the, the two-wheel drive C5, you know, Blazers are very popular. But people are going cra- the crazy lifted ones. Right. You know, and you see, like, the a factory looking blazer on 35s it's you know freshly done right going down the road um and yeah and travis's you know delmo um 
I don't think he was the original builder, but he no. redid a lot yeah. of stuff on it. Um, right. And but then even then, um, you know, Travis went to uh, you know Hoagie out in uh, Arizona, and who is building some super clean, oh. you know, like lifted K fives. Yes. Um, I mean, it's funny. You look at it and you go, "Oh, that's a very well restored K five. And then you start looking at all the parts that are on it and yeah. the little touches. We talked about Bear Jackson with ponies. Well, yeah, Hoagie just you know sold a blazer for almost four hundred thousand dollars. You know, but that year. that's actually starting to become the norm. I not, I yeah. can you know, again go back to PPC Customs. You know, a few years back for SEMA and the Hostel Wheels built booth, they built a uh, a blazer for a cotton farmer up there in the Central Valley, mm-hmm. and his bill was three twenty five. You know, but again, too, we're looking at you're looking at full Dana 60 or whatever axles. Oh, yeah. uh, cantilever suspension, mm-hmm. king shocks, uh, obviously a, a, a 6.2 LS. Um, I mean, full custom everything. Yeah. And, and that's what most of these guys are ordering now. They, they want the blazer look, but they want it their style. Um, and it's the same thing. They want kind of like the modern suspension. Right. On it. You know, it's yeah. those things were, you know, like, yeah, you're dealing with big old leaf, heavy duty leaf springs and all that stuff. It's. Yeah, upgrade everything, you know, kind of keep the look the same. And that's, you know, I think what Hoagie's kind of really honed in on is it looks like the Blazer back then. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, the fit and the finish is a million times better. But, yeah, you look underneath and it's got the best suspension you can have on right. it, you know. Right, And that's still still a lot of people rock crawling with these, you know, using them as mud trucks, lift oh, trucks. Yeah. I mean, obviously, I think the Blazers have kept their mud life, you know, kind of style for throughout the whole history. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you look at it, most of them didn't come with carpet. If you're looking at the action line ones, you know, those were, were pretty much either a steel floor or even some of them had wood floors, you know? Um, so that's something you could still hose out. And, and again, too, GM looked at that as your hunter. When you, if you kill a deer and put it in the back of your truck, it's real easy to, to wash it out. I mean, blood is a very nasty thing to have in your interior. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, speaking of that, uh, so I obviously had a blazer build going for a little bit, um, brass tacks right. that we're doing in the magazine. And that started out as a, you know, seventies, you know, the square body style, uh, four wheel drive. And it was a Texas hunting it was their lodge or their, yeah. their, 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 their hide, you know, um, get around trucks. So like, yeah, there was an arrow that we found in the back. <laughs> there was a couple drops of blood from some, you know, a deer. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we started that, you know, uh, that got started over at status in 2011. Right. And kind of that idea behind that at the time, you know, Travis had finished up his F100 that Hills did, you know, one of the non square body, yeah. you know, C tens that or or you know that Hills did, and kind of the goal was okay, let's let's balance the magazine out, let's have a a high end, innovative, creative build, you know, that'll really catch attention. Balance that out with your DIY at home kind of garage stuff. Yeah. Um. But yeah, so I mean, taking the page from a lot of the other you know K fives, where okay, make it a roadster, right? You know, razor the the top of the glass. Yeah. You know, put the the pillars back. You know, Bob Grant did door skins that then were at the same level right. as the bed sides in the back. Um, so you know that way it would all match up. But you know, we we're kind of let's go full street rods. So that was the kind of whole deal. Put a thirty two you know Deuce Brookville dash yeah. in it and with the gauge cluster. You know, f- full custom interior. Um, but one of the really cool things that 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 I know that Chris did on the front was. Uh, rather than having a bumper actually took the front section of the hood of, you know, a spare hood flipped it and made that a front roll pan. Yeah. That was really cool. So that way it kept the same body lines all the way through, you know, and then cut up a Camaro bumper, you know, as kind of like your little impact strip accent on it. But, um, you know, that unfortunately, you know, after leaving the magazine kind of filtered on passed through some hands and uh but luckily you know i think now the the guy that owns it now uh this guy lynn out in in houston uh he's finishing it uh so hopefully we'll be seeing that one out uh, good pretty soon good but well i think we should can continue on the timeline let's start talking about when blazers weren't removable tops and basically the the end of the blazer you know moniker true um because obviously you know we're talking 88 you know is when the you know 
GMT 400, the OBS, you know, the CK truck came about, um, but they didn't do the Suburbans, the Blazers, the Dooleys until a few years later. Right. Um, so yeah, you're looking at, you know, what was it? 91, no, well, 92. Not, 92 is really when they came out. Um, yeah. and they were they, still called Blazers. They were still called Blazers. Yeah. Uh, but the funny thing is GMC uh, actually kicked out the name Jimmy for the full size ones and created what's called the Yukon. Yeah. But they kept the Jimmy moniker on uh, the, the S series. On the small, yeah, on the, on the mini blazers, ones. right? Yep. So, um, that, that was kind of a big deal, but yeah, 92 comes out. Uh, the two door blazer comes on the scene, both four wheel drive, two wheel drive. Um, they're immediate- I think a lot of the two wheel drives were like a little more special order. They, they were there, they were still they the were rare, simple, yeah, you know, yeah. They followed version. suit from the, the square body, the rounded line series, where they didn't they made more four wheel drives than they made two wheel drives. Our industry is very creative, you know, so hey, if it's four wheel drive, well. That ain't gonna stop me. Well, you that's know, so exa- I know. Like, yeah, that's the, what happened with the, the Beltec. Beltec. Yeah, the yellow, you know, two door. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it started out as a four wheel drive. Well, and that's so funny about that because so they wanted to jump on the whole Blazer market, mm-hmm. and of course they had a great uh, relationship with General Motors. But because the vehicles were so hot and so new, it was very difficult to get models. Yeah. So they bought a four wheel drive model, and gutted it. And turn it into a two-wheel drive. Mm-hmm. Yeah, lowered it down, right? Slammed it on some voids. You yeah, know, and that the was usual recipe. And that was uh, that vehicle was for SEMA, so it was a SEMA rush. It was a SEMA crunch. Uh, they got the vehicle very late in the year, uh, in the year for SEMA. Mm-hmm. Uh, I remember being at Santini, and that thing showed up, and it was like all hands on deck, guys. We need to get this thing powered out. So Santini actually. Uh, did a color change on it and made it the yellow blazer that we know of the famous. Was originally like black or something? Or what? Uh, it was a- actually a, a, the Force Green model. Oh wow! You know, <laughs> so it was kind of like that dark green, yeah. kind of you know nasty looking thing. But mm-hmm. uh, they they turned that thing around and turned it into um, you know a SEMA vehicle, and it didn't last year long. Um, it actually got shipped to Japan pretty quickly. Yeah, say, yeah, a lot of stuff was getting shipped over there in the, yeah. in the nineties. Um, but yeah, and the 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 two door. We call them now two door Tahoes. That's kind of the, the name, but you know, obviously they were Blazers, you know, at that time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they kept you know getting popular. A lot of st- you know people were were building them. They were you know doing performance stuff to them. You know. Well, anything that was new, especially during that time, it was game on. Mm-hmm. What could you do to this? Um, one that comes to mind is uh, Dean Sears. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Sport trucks by Dean. Sport trucks by Dean. He built a uh, a, a skirted two-door Tahoe or yeah. two-door Blazer. Sorry. That's a, yeah. Yeah. He added a little custom, yeah. you know, stuff on the roof. And that was for Cruz Pendergon, Pendergon, sorry, uh, who was a famous funny car racer um, that at the time he was sponsored by McDonald's. And part, uh, so that's why they painted it the, the kind of the same scheme as his funny yeah. car. Yellow, white, and right. red. And, and that was, uh, it was meant to go around um, to different, they just they displayed it around the racetrack and they displayed it around the country and I yeah. mean it got a lot of oh, you know yeah. a lot of stuff a lot of people looked at that so yeah no and that's you know there's guys doing drag race kind of pro street style I mean it's you could fit you know stuff in there but um, one of the ones that that really stood out to me that was done you know kind of a little bit later in the two thousands uh, was Craig Elders okay I mean that orange yeah his wife's yeah. orange yeah two door Blazer Tahoe was. I mean, especially too. He would he would show up with a two or three car trailer pulled by a huge lifted you know truck or excursion or whatever. Right. And he'd have everything laid out on the truck on the trailer, and it you know color matched it all. Like, yeah, he was making a statement. Um, but yeah, that that Tahoe was you know really iconic. When he was building that Tahoe, I was working at Linex for Linex Corporate, mm-hmm. and at the time color was kind of a weird deal like you could color a bed liner but yeah, not just a black you know spray and liner right yeah. but it, it was very difficult you know to do it you'd have to flush the lines out you'd have to waste about a hundred dollars worth of material doing that so it wasn't very popular even though that the colors are available but the colors are very primary everything was kind of like you had your just straight pigment colors so no deviations of pearls or, or yeah, metallics were available with it. Yeah. And, and, and craig showed up with the with the tahoe and um he goes i want to I want to spray the inside of it because I'm going to put a big stereo in it. And at the time... So we want to kind of like the sound ending. That's what it was. You know, kind of factor. And, and, and he said that he knew he could put dynamat in it, but he said, I, I want to just encapsulate the whole thing because I, do, I don't want it to rattle. Mm-hmm. Right? And we were like, okay. 
And so he brought it in, it was painted and we love the paint. You know, we were all falling over the thing, looking at the paint. And he looked at me and he just says, Hey, can you color match that? And I just looked at him like, what? You know, he wanted that tan yellow color. Yeah. And I, I, I just, I was like, Craig, this doesn't exist. I mean, I can do orange, but I can't do tan yellow. And he was like, why not? So I went over to our local paint supplier um, at the time. They were um, uh, auto color specialists in, in Westminster. And I asked uh, the, their, their color expert, and I said, look, I'm, I'm looking to add this pigment or, or this paint into a pigment that can go on top of, uh, of a urethane. And he looked at me and goes, no problem. Just, just remove the binder. He goes, just rely on the urethane yeah, binder of the bed liner, yeah. right? So sure enough, he mixes up some uh, uh, some color. And, and what we ended up doing was it, it, we didn't add the the paint to the actual Linex material. We, we sprayed that out in orange. So just think of like doing like a base coat yeah. of just, just straight orange, mm-hmm. right? And then we came back on top of that with a mix of, of, of like car yeah, paint. Just like regular painting. Right. Yeah. And then just kind of the last coat was a, was a car paint. And the nice thing was that material, because it didn't have any binder, it actually migrated through the bedliner material and actually became part of that material mm. and that was like the first time that the, a color match bedliner came out yeah Game and that kind of opened up Whoa. you know ideas for all kinds of custom Boom. Work. Yeah. right i mean that, that went everywhere but um to back up to even uh, you know because craig's was body dropped it had yeah. big wheels on it. it it had kind of the mini truck style we also have to kind of back up too and, and look at like you know bruce from the drop shop mm-hmm. where he built a pro street tahoe um, I'm sorry, blazer. Cause it was a blazer. That's yeah. I mean, there's, the, <laughs> it's a there's hard some one, mixed yeah. gears and all yeah. that, but yeah, we're kind of, but, just uh, looking at those. that actually, I remember that showed up at Santini shop too, as well. Um, back, I want to say maybe 93, 94. Um, and, and Steve DeMann actually was working there at the time, uh, as an apprentice for, for Pete Santini mm-hmm. and those guys tag team that thing. And, and, and I've heard Pete, himself even say it's probably one of his most famous paint jobs or his favorite favorite yeah favorites um it had ghosted uh checkered graphics in pearl that you'd have to even move a light or you'd have to like turn your head a different way um i mean it was base colored white but just had a amazing beautiful candy paint job uh and graphics on top of it so yeah it, it was really something to look at and that as well too that that saw the uh the boat ride over to japan as well so <laughs> So hopefully it's still there cruising around. Right. Um, but yeah, I mean, obviously the two door kind of blazer kind of started to fall off because, you know, you go station wagon, minivan, SUV. Yes. You know, kind of the, the, the four door Suburbans, four door Tahoes, you know, that was what your regular, you know, soccer mom, soccer dad, right. know, family, uh, kind of wanted. So yeah, in, in 95, they, uh, changed the name. That's right. They, they, they got rid of the blazer for obviously the full size, right. Made it, change it to Tahoe. Um, they still kept, you know, the two door one for a little bit for a couple years. Um, but eventually, you know, that went away and just basically the Tahoe was kind of the main. Well, you know, you know, one thing too, that was kind of unique about this, this generation was, is that for the first time, as far as car enthusiasts or, or custom enthusiasts, the four wheel drive wasn't as popular as the two wheel drive. Yeah. You know, you didn't see a lot of lifted, uh, uh, t- uh blazers or jimmies or I'm yeah, sorry, yeah, the nineties, you know, body style. Yeah. Yeah. It was more, the, they, they went after the two wheel drives yeah. and, and, and I can think to myself, um, boy, uh, Mike Filion, mm-hmm. um, where he, uh, he and his buddy, um, yeah, Tex. Tex, yeah. Yeah, yeah why? Yeah, they uh, they decided to roadster one because, mm-hmm. you know, it was popular in the earlier models. Why can't we roadster the late model one? Yeah. So that as well. Yeah, it's not a removable top. It's not a removable <laughs> top. So, you know, yeah, you Mike Mike actually cut the roof off of that and, and braced up the, the, the whole body. Yeah. And uh, that was also a four-wheel drive. Yeah, so, converted down to a two-wheel drive. Uh, they had to convert it to a two-wheel drive. And he was a, uh, a service manager over a parts manager, sorry at a Chevrolet dealership here in Southern California. So they were able to locate the last two wheel drive, uh, blazer frame in existence. Uh That was it. I mean, Chevrolet said, we're not making these anymore. Yeah. Here's the last one in stock. So they converted that over to two wheel drive. Uh, Mike again over at pro design. Who's another metal magician, um, cut the roof off of it, capped the tops. Yeah. Did the the front end, made it look like an old sixties, you know, uh, truck front end. And yeah, and that's the thing, you know, that was best beach cruiser around. Oh yeah. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So 
Chevy Blazer kind of kind of went through some some rough times in the next few years with Chevy. You know, obviously, yeah, the the S tens those kind of kept that. You know, even throughout the later years, you know, you have the S ten Blazer, the Blazer Extreme. Yeah. Um, you know, then that turned into the Trailblazer. Um, well, let's think about GMC's Typhoon. Oh yeah, we forgot even that. Right? Because they did a special, yeah, special kind of version from the Cyclone. Right, right. I mean, yeah. all-wheel drive, turbocharged V6 that came out came from the the Grand National platform. Um, you could have an 11 second SUV on the streets that had stock tires. Yeah. No, and that's yeah, 5.3 seconds on a zero to 60 time. Yeah. For a little SUV. And they were all-wheel drive. In the 90s? Right, right. They were badass. <laughs> like, that's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A friend of mine had one, um, and uh, it, we didn't like riding in it, because first off, Aaron was a lead foot, and the all-wheel drive, it would just kind of haze the front end. Like, it, it, it was uh, not They didn't really, quite have it dialed in. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. a handling car. Well, you know, Aaron, too, put a bigger turbo on it, but... Oh, but, well, I mean, that might have had something to do with it, But just, it wasn't that kind of car that you felt comfortable in. Yeah. Because it, w- it would haze all four tires. Um, and, and in that little small little package too, you could just zip in and out of traffic. So it was a little scary to drive. Um, but they were also another limited number version. Yeah. Yeah. And only like 4,500 of them. Yeah, like yeah. Yeah. They, they were Not a great. Time, a couple of years only. Right. You know, the, the sad thing is, is that like, like you mentioned the fate of the blazer, uh, it did die off with the Tahoe. However, well, it, yeah. And we should say it, it died off as far as the OEM is concerned. Right. I mean, obviously like we've just been talking about the, you know, when the C10s have been popular, the the K5s have come along with it, you know, as far as the custom side. Um, but yeah, I mean, we're talking Trailblazer, which, okay, yeah, they made an SS Trailblazer. It was the platform for, you know, the, the SSR right. truck. Um, but other than that, it was just your regular old, you know, commuter. Yeah. you know, thing, nothing, nothing crazy. Um, and we, when we, I think we all got really excited a few years ago yeah. <laughs> when we heard that they were going to bring back the blazer. Yeah. And it was right at the time that the new trucks style was coming out. Right. You know, so people were thinking, Oh, are they going to do a you know new blazer? Cause this is also when the Bronco was yes. being announced to bring it back. It's like, okay, things are happening. Yeah. You know, this might be a good thing. And I think we're all let wah, down. Wah, wah. Yeah, yeah, they made it a crossover, and yeah, it's just a regular it's, crossover. Like, it looks what's like the a rental, point? It looks like a rental car. No, and that's <laughs> yeah. What's the point of putting the Blazer monocrome yeah. on it if it's not right that based could've, on anything? That could have just stayed the Traverse. Yeah, or it, the Trail Blazer even. Yeah, yeah. like that would have been fine. Right, but, right. Um, yeah, so I mean, obviously, kind of the Blazer has kind of gone away. You know, obviously, in the '90s was kind of its last hurrah. Uh, as far as that, you know, moniker's considered. Um, and if we're talking 90s, you know, we got to talk OBS sport trucks. Uh, so stay tuned for that because um, we've got a lot of history in the OBS sport truck movement to talk about. Mm-hmm.